Hi everyone, uh, this is Les with Team PyTorch, and today we're going to go over um, how to maximize your GPU throughput uh, using FSTP. Um, so I've got a notebook here as usual. Uh, we'll start at the top. Um, just showing you that I'm running on the um, July 6 nightly versions. Uh, so the main point I wanted to make with this tutorial is the conventional wisdom uh, for maximizing your GPU or training throughput is basically you crank up your batch size up to go out of memory and then you back off just a touch and once you can successfully run uh, you've effectively maximized your throughput. Um, that however is actually not optimal. Uh, the way that you want to do it, uh, within at least within a FSTP, is you need to back your batch size down both below the out of memory, obviously, but below that you need to go further and ensure that you're not resetting the cache uh, by any CUDA malloc retries. So I've got an example here that I wanted to run you through, and uh, I'm actually gonna, I'm not going to run it live, but I've run them and got some screenshots here to show you what the, kind of the progression here. So <clears throat> we're going to take a Two billion uh, bit model, and we're going to run FSTP with zero through sharding and batch size four to start. Um, this is on an eight GPU single node. So we go ahead and run that, and we're monitoring the step size. We're going to take an average of five step size, uh, step sizes, and what we'll see is that we're using 69% of GPU memory. Um, this is just a printout that the utility I'll show you in a little bit. Uh, it's tracking the reserve memory and memory percentage. Um, but the most important point is we've got a 5.5594. For our batch size, we've still got lots of GPU memory, so let's go ahead and uh, move our batch size up until we hit an out-of-memory. So we uh, hit it, it, I just jumped up to 24 uh, from the original four. We do get our expected CUDA out-of-memory, and we'll start backing off. Um, and as it turns out, the first point where we can fit everything uh, conveniently uh, without any out-of-memory is batch size 17. <laughs> so let's take a look at some stats on that. We get a... Um, step size here of 7.2645 and if we compute that to put that into apples to apples in other words uh, images per second we can see that uh, with batch size 4 we were running at 5.55 17 7.26 so when you do the math here it turns out that yes by uh, bumping it out of memory putting it down uh, or pulling it down just below that threshold we've got a 3.25x speed up so that looks really good and most people at that point would leave it and call it good uh, but the question is, can we do better? And we absolutely can do better. And we need to optimize not just to ensure that we're below the out of memory threshold, but we need to optimize to ensure we are getting no CUDA malloc retries. So to do that, as it turns out, it's actually just slightly one batch size uh, below. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, if we run that at 16, then as it turns out, we get a step size of 5.4604. And uh, very close in terms of the percentage used, 93.83, and I think up here we had yeah 94.7. So it's a very minor difference, but it's a significant net in terms of net improvement in terms of images per second. So uh, in summary, it's actually a 25% improvement. So by avoiding the CUDA malloc retries, uh, we suddenly have jumped our performance or training speed or throughput 25% over the conventional wisdom of just backing off, so you're not hitting out of memory. Uh, this is a little summary table, kind of showing you exactly the details. So we started with batch size of 4, we had a step size of 5.55, 18 we hit out of memory, uh, at 24, but 18 continued. Uh, and then 17 was our first point where we could run everything through at 7.26. And this is our images per second and the memory uh, used on the GPUs. But as you can see, we went from uh, 2.3 images per second to 2.9, 3 images per second, just by optimizing around um, avoiding any CUDA malloc retries, and that gives us our 25% uh, improvement over conventional wisdom. So that is the way that you want to tune uh, your training with FSTP. So I guess the other question that comes up, of course, is how do you uh, see these CUDA malloc retries since they don't uh, pop up in the way that obviously out of memory does? Um, there's a couple APIs you can use. Uh, one, if you want to do things by hand, is this torch.cuda.memory summary and that will give you a printout after your training and the key thing you want to look for is this thing here CUDA malloc retries in this case this is nine so that's actually coming off of the 17 batch size um, and that is what will if you're just going to program not, not programmatically do it, but if you're going to do it by hand that's the quick way to do it uh, a more efficient way uh, in terms of longer term and, and logging and so forth is actually making use of some additional uh, PyTorch CUDA APIs so there is a torch.cuda.memory stats that will return a dictionary. You can query that dictionary. Uh, in this case, the, the most important we want to monitor is num alloc retries. <coughs> Excuse me. The other option you can also uh, watch for 
out of memories, but the key thing we're, we're optimizing around is the SNOM alloc retries. Um, I have included an additional uh, utility class that you're welcome to use um, that will actually uh, track not just the number of retries, but also your percentage of GPU utilization, uh, either on a per epoch or per mini batch step, uh, mini batch uh, point. And that will let you see a little bit more refinement uh, to give you more specifics. The output is basically the reserved memory as an array and your memory percentage. And I like to watch this just to see that we have a, a normal smooth regression. You do expect that you'll have a little bit of increased memory and that it should stabilize after the second uh, mini batch or epoch there. Um, and so that gives you, of course, your percentages and so forth. And most importantly, uh, you can programmatically access the Kudamalik retries. So that is the, um, what we'll call it the better way to optimize your uh, training to maximize your throughput. So again, uh, watching uh, to avoid uh, hitting CUDA malloc retries is the, the way to, to really do it. And as you can see, we've, we've achieved 25% uh, speed up over conventional wisdom. So hope that helps.